Hello hitchhikers, welcome back um, to this uh, hitchhiking trail into the Kingdom of God. I hope you're enjoying this uh, video series. Um, this particular video I wanted to shoot because a lot of people ask me uh, how do I actually conduct myself during a ministry session. Um, um, so I'll, I'll try and tell you if I can how it works. Um, we tend to always see two of us together. Um, sometimes I'll see a gentleman on my own, but I'd never see a lady on my own uh, for obvious reasons. They come in, they sit down, uh, usually make them a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, and then I sit and I listen to what they're going to say to me. And I listen and I listen and I let them talk and talk and talk um, and listen and listen and listen until they've gone as far as they can in telling me what the, the problem is that, that we need to pray for. Having uh, gone through that one, uh, I then move into the point of saying to them, now, um, the way this actually works, this ministry session, is that you sit over there, I sit over here, I'm not going to perform any rituals whatsoever on you, I'm not going to come and sit with you, I'm not going to touch you, I'm not going to pour anything all over you, I'm just going to sit here and and talk to you and we're going to worship God together but don't worry about that because I'll do it all anyway first thing I'm going to do is to tell the supplicant that's what we'll call the gentleman or the lady who's come in going to talk to you about something about the kingdom of God and it's not because you don't know it I would say to them it's just that I love telling people about the kingdom of God um, if you've been watching these other videos this is the proclamation bit yeah, this is where you proclaim the good news of the kingdom. And I talk first about uh, the beginning of the Bible, Genesis and Eden and the story of the Garden of Eden, because everybody knows that, even non-Christians know that story. And I say, to, and at the end of the Bible is uh, uh, another scene, but it's a city, it's the New Jerusalem coming down. So you've got at the beginning uh, what the Bible thinks happened when history began. At the end, you've got what the Bible's got to say about history as we know it ending. And what I want the supplicant to try and understand is what I say to them is that oh, expressions like Garden of Eden, the New Jerusalem, uh, the Kingdom of God, the Promised Land, Heaven, Heaven on Earth, these are all just uh, different names, depending on who you're talking to in Bible times, are different names for exactly the same place. The Kingdom of God is the place where uh, Jesus rules, where what he says is it. Um, and if it isn't going to behave itself, then it's not in the Kingdom. And so, you know, our job is to, is to really is to pull the Kingdom over you. And the way I say this is that whatever uh, cause that people have come for for prayer, you'll find it's not in the Garden of Eden. You see, what's lovely about the Garden of Eden is not what isn't is there, it's what isn't there, which is really interesting. So if somebody has come to see me with cancer, I would say, look, there's no cancer in the Garden of Eden, and yet God finished it and said, this is very good. So he thinks it's very good when there's no cancer there. If somebody had arthritis, I would say the same thing. If somebody had a damaged heart, I would say the same thing. Um, a lady uh, actually phoned me in the office today to discuss some sexual abuse thing that happened to her many, many years ago. And uh, it's quite obvious that, that um, what she has is a very, very sore place in her heart uh, where, where the memory of all this still dwells. So that's a soreness that we need healed and so on. Yes? So what we do is, is we say these things, if you look, they don't exist in the Garden of Eden. And yet, God said when he finished making it, this is very good. So these things are not very good. So we look at the end of time and say, you see what's happened at the end. God has come back. Jesus has come back. No more sickness. No more tears. The whole thing is, is actually a city in, in the picture of it. But it's actually the Garden of Eden restored. And um, I ask her, please don't worry about the science of these things. Yeah. Um, do you like Darwinism? Do you like creationism? I'm not worried about that sort of thing, to be honest, because those things are pictures. They are books written as pictures. 
um, and they describe what God thinks is very good. So you have a huge, uh, lovely uh, peak existence at the beginning, you have a peak existence at the end, and in between is this mess that we've got to live in. What's interesting, when we get to the end of time, God will restore us all. We'll all have glorified bodies and, and we won't have cancers and arthritis and sore spots on our hearts. Wonderful. Hmm. But in the meantime, God, in his grace, you see, has said to us, but you don't have to wait. You don't have to wait for this. I will send Jesus. And somewhere in between those two events, I'm sorry, I can't tell you exactly where, but somewhere in between those two events came Jesus. And Jesus was the perfect image of the invisible God. Now that's really interesting. So if you want to know what God thinks about stuff, look at Jesus. What did Jesus do about he? Uh, well, he didn't actually do much else uh, before he met Pontius Pilate. I'm sure I've said this in other videos, except proclaim the kingdom of God and do miracles of restoration. But then he said, you see, but he didn't. This is fascinating, I'll get this right around for you. He didn't say no. It's important you say this to the supplicant. Jesus never said no. Jesus never said wait. Jesus never said you've got to get your act together first before I can heal you. Jesus never said you've got to come to church more often. Jesus never said you've got to forgive everybody before I can have anything to do with you. Jesus never said that to anybody. Jesus never uh, said, but you're too old, you know, you're going to fall apart anyway. Jesus never went down a line of lepers asking for birth certificates. Jesus didn't pay, Jesus just said yes. The kingdom of God is the place of yes. Jesus then said to us, but hey, I'm only doing what I see the Father doing. So here's the Father trying to turn the mess we made of that Eden picture into the beauty of the picture at the end. Uh, and Jesus is working to do that. He does it by proclaiming the kingdom of God and the Holy Spirit turns up and heals the sick to prove that what he's saying is right. That's the dynamic. That's how the kingdom of God works. That's what I'm doing right now, participating in that. I am saying, as Jesus said, this is the kingdom of God. This is what it looks like. It doesn't contain what the supplicant has got. Jesus came and Jesus never refused anybody and then said, but I'm only behaving like the Father behaves. Jesus is the perfect image of the invisible God. Hmm? That actually is uh, part one of the message of the cross, which you will find elsewhere in this video series. Part two, I then go on to tell them that Jesus died. It's, it's awfully important because Jesus died meant quite simply is all I say to people really, uh, never mind the theology of all this, Jesus died, he, he got out of the way in that anything that could come between your supplicant and the love of God. There's nothing now to stop, yes? In the Old Testament, you see, God only healed one or two people now and again, like he had his hand on a tap and switched it on and switched it off. In the New Testament, he doesn't do that. In the New Testament, uh, the river of grace just floods through all the time. So, because this is how Jesus was looking at the Father. Never said no. Never said you'll have to wait for a bit. Never said I got other things to sort out first, I'll get back to you. He only ever said yes. The kingdom of God is a place of yes. And it's opened up to us now because Jesus died. If you want to talk about torn curtains, it, it's the same effect. Yeah? Jesus is alive. Well, this is in the message of the cross, so I'm sorry if this is repeating stuff, but we, the kingdom walkers desperately need this ingrained in them, the message of the cross, because this is where the power of God is. They're in the message. Jesus, then I tell them, you see, that Jesus is alive, uh, that he is now sitting at the right hand of the Father, whispering in his ear. And what's he whispering in his ear? Answer the supplicant's name. It's your name that he's whispering in the Father's ear all the time. So we talk about that. And then I'd say, and then the third, the fourth part, I'm sorry, of the message of the cross is that Jesus is working still. Do you know the other day I met this lady and this happened and that happened and I tell them uh, a wonderful story about uh, people um, receiving healing from the Lord. 
yeah then what I do is say now I'm going to just pray okay I don't I say to the supplicant I don't want you to do anything I don't want you to pray I don't want you to mumble away at me under your breath or anything like that just sit there and enjoy yourself whatever goes through your head goes through your head I don't want you to do anything just sit there and enjoy yourself I said it's, it's not my job to get God to do anything to you because it's all done uh, because of the cross the gate is open the river is flowing and it's my job to stick you in the river so this is what I do and I do it through worship and through thanksgiving because that's the way the Bible tells me what to do um, if the supplicant says ah but what about asking God I say no you know the church does that it spends its life whining at God to do something and heal the sick but actually the Bible says just say thank you, yes, and it'll happen. Psalm 50, verse 23, if you want to check that one out. But it's in Jesus' teaching, and it's a lot in Paul's teaching. Pray ceaselessly for the saints with thanksgiving, etc., uh, etc. Et and then I begin to worship God, and this is all thank you. Thank you, Father, that... Thank you for grace. Thank you that this healing belongs to this lady or this gentleman because of what Jesus has done. Not because of what they've done or because of what they haven't done. It's because of what Jesus has done that this healing belongs to them. Jesus has taken all our pain and carried all our sickness and by his wounds we are healed. It's by his wounds. It's by what he did. It's through what he did on Calvary that we are healed. Thank you, Father, that you have organized Calvary, the cross, with Jesus. It's taken all our griefs, carried all our sorrows. By his wounds we're healed. Yeah? Thank you, Father, that in front of your throne of grace in heaven is a sparkling sea, a sea of grace. And Jesus, as he died on the cross, effectively broke the banks of that. And down comes the river psalm 46 verse 4 there is a river whose streams make glad the city of god where the most high dwells it's the father's good pleasure says jesus to give you the kingdom down comes the river pouring down the middle of the street in heaven under the tree with the leaves for the healing of the nations back through that torn curtain into the world into this country into this room all over you supplicant that's what's happening. Bless you. Thank you, Father, for grace. Thank you for pouring grace. Yeah? Thank you, Father. You showed exactly this river to Ezekiel. He saw a river, came out from under the throne of grace. It came, he had to go in it knee deep and, and ankle deep first, wasn't it? Knee deep and waist deep. And then he had to swim in it because it was so big. And that river flowed underneath the tree with the leaves for the healing of the nations. And went into the salt sea where it made everything fresh. And later on the Bible says, and everything that went there lived. And there's a perfectly good translation in ancient Hebrew which says, everything that went there was healed. So I bless you for grace. Thank you, Father. Yeah, thank you for grace. Thank you for giving that, to, that, that river of grace into the world. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you that Jesus has taken all our pain, carried all our sickness by his wounds were healed. Bless you, Lord. Amen. And then I would say to the supplicant, well, it depends. I would say, how are you feeling? Um, very often supplicants say a deep peace inside. If you've conducted this slower than I just have, because you're not on video, <laughs> uh, gentle, yes, uh, quiet, uh, sitting where you are, leaving them to sit where they are. Don't be demonstrative about it. Just let God do the work. And just give thanks and glory to God. Yeah? Your kingdom come, Lord. Your will be done in this lady or this gentleman, just like it is upstairs. I know what your will is, Lord. I read your book. And you never said no. You never said wait. You only ever did what the Father's doing. So your will be done in this lady or this gentleman, just like it is in heaven. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. 
Thank you for Jesus. Jesus has taken all our pain, carried all our sickness, and by his wounds were healed. Bless you. Praise you, Lord. And get a little carried away with a bit of glory giving now. I'll come back to you. Sorry about that. The <laughs> um, just worship God. Worship God. How do you feel? Well, and, and if they've come with something like a bad leg or a stiff neck or a stiff arm, ask them. Put your money where your mouth is, yeah? Ask, how does it feel? Try, try moving a bit. For goodness sake, don't hurt yourself. But try a bit of movement. See if that's any better at all. And they, yeah, well, a bit, a bit better, they say, yes? And if they say, well, I could move it a bit more than I could before, then say, well, let's have another go, shall we? Just sit there and enjoy it. And away you go again. Do exactly the same thing. Remember... Uh, please, when um, Joshua hit Jericho, he didn't pull the walls down the first time that he went round with his trumpets proclaiming the presence of the living word of God. He didn't. He had to go round quite a few times before he knocked them over. And that's what we do. We go on. So is it feeling any better? Yes. No, just a bit. That's all. And just keep going till you've got as much as you can get. And if it's not all of it, then... But always finish by saying, would you like to come back? And we can go on with this. Yeah? And if you're hesitant about it, well, think about it and give us a call. And if you, if you say, yes, fine, we'll come back. So, well, let's make an appointment now so that we can go on and on. Yes? Pushing and pushing. Why not? Eh? It's a glorious thing. So that's how I conduct myself uh, during a private ministry session. Um, I prefer to do that. Uh, than do it in public, to be honest. I'm not a fan of healing services. Um, I, I've thought long and hard about the value of them and I haven't really come up with anything. I think really to do it in private yields huge amounts of fruit. Uh, and it's a great blessing to all of us. So I bless that to you. Um, you know, it's just that a lot of people ask me, how do I conduct myself in, in, in private? And that's how I do it. So bless you to mull over that and have a think about it. And maybe talk about that with some ministry colleagues or something. See how you get on. Bless you. Welcome back another day for another guide to the kingdom of God. Amen.